spirit of the living God open our eyes grant us understanding and help us pray in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated God bless you God bless you hallelujah I really want to appreciate all of us it's been a journey of sacrifice the Lord will honor us in Jesus name there must always come a time where you must be ready to commit your spirit to build to have some time dedicated and we're happy that this is what God is doing you're ready for tonight's revelation Ephesians chapter 6 the shield of faith the shield of faith tonight the Lord will give us a revelation the shield of faith yesterday we looked at the mystery of the serpent and the woman you know that many of us found that revelation very disturbing um, but it's a call to know God and it's a call to understand his ways Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16 theologically speaking we know that the book of Ephesians was a demonstration of the apex of Paul's apostolic ministry it was here that Paul communicated the the revelations of God committed to him with the greatest sense of balance six chapters divided into three portions that demonstrate the full stature of the believer Ephesians chapter 1 and 2 begins by giving us a revelation of our position the positional advantage that we have on account of who Christ is in chapter 1 it tells us what has happened to Christ in chapter 2 we now find ourselves featured there that he's not only seated but we are seated with him hallelujah and then he begins to teach us the character and the lifestyle that is befitting for a believer and now he teaches us the subject of warfare and not just warfare he now begins to guide us on the spiritual arsenals that are available for the believer and one of it is what we are considering verse 16 above all this is the first revelation we want to see meaning he had said some other things that considers um, important for the believer but he says above them all above every other thing he said taking the shield of faith please follow me carefully taking the shield of faith wherewith meaning with that shield of faith ye shall have an ability that faith can give you an ability and he says with that ability you can quench how many here is a big secret there are certain weapons that cannot do certain things Prayer and fasting can cast a kind of spirits. Jesus said this kind. There are spirits that are casted just by declaring the name of Jesus. There are spirits that you must engage prayer and fasting. There are spirits that are casted through knowledge. There are spirits that are casted through sacrifice. There are spirits that are casted through covenant. There are spirits that are casted through agreement. But there is a mystery that can address everything it says wherein we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts not some the fiery darts of the wicked above all i've taught you other principles but above all taking the shield of faith he said wherein you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts i want you to follow the progression of the revelations that we share day by day remember that when i was talking to you about satan day two we were discussing how that satan influences people by informations are we together now that's it's not it's not satan's best when he oppresses people and afflicts them physically that's not where you get his best the best is he brings you to a system of servitude by selling an information to you that makes you his slave that's how he became the god of thrones and dominions and the kings upon the earth he supplied an information are we together 
and here the bible is saying that three things will happen one that a man he never said take faith take note now he didn't say take faith he said the shield of faith and then he says you will be able to quench the fiery darts what are they it's not it will be costly for us to assume we understand what he's saying what is fiery darts arrows hmm. are we together now yes and then he says you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked so faith is many things a shield is one of what faith can become that's not all it can become but he's saying that faith has dimensions just like love the breath the length that there is a dimension of faith there is something you can do with your faith that can become a shield this is what he's teaching you already have faith but is it a shield faith can be an instrument of getting answers but not a shield the operation of faith as a shield is not the operation of faith that will give you answered prayers this is what i'm trying to teach you he's teaching warfare here not answered prayers he's teaching a defense system how a believer can use faith not just to obtain a good report like hebrews 11 no he's teaching warfare here there is how you can engage in faith and please god there is how you can engage in faith and receive things that god promised but there is how you can use faith like a defense this is not god now god is in heaven you are using your faith to defend yourself he's saying taking the shield of faith wherein you will be able to quench all the fiery darts let's look at what apostle john said first john chapter 5 and verse 4 first john chapter 5 and verse 4 he said for whatsoever is born of god remember we spoke about the seed of the serpent yesterday that whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world the greek word cosmos the social strata alongside the mindset that exists in it he says and this is that victory that overcometh the world even our faith so faith is many things an instrument for receiving answered prayer is just one of it unfortunately many people that's all they know about faith as an instrument that can bridge between you and what you want so every time we say faith our idea is just about receiving things are we together now that just an instrument to receive the bible says in warfare the shield is faith this is the victory that overcomes that there are fiery darts that can come for a believer and that when you know how to convert your faith like a shield it can shield all not some there is something you can do with faith that can shield all the fiery darts my first question is what is the fiery dart? that that's where i want us to look at because if we don't know what it is what is the fiery darts of the devil that he says to quench now he was speaking to people in those days who were used to warfare and the shield he was talking about yes not some small shield that you see the way the the military people fought war the shield was as tall as them from head to toe they could hold it are we together now and in ancient times when they were fighting war because of how they were trained the tip of their arrows were dipped sometimes in poison and when they fired it if it touched any part of you it could kill you so the goal was for the the arrow to touch any part of you and it would destroy you number two sometimes they could light fire on the arrows are we together now and with that arrow something that will be burning maybe like kerosene or something so that if it touched you whether your clothes or whatever it could set you on fire and so it says that in that similitude satan throws things at people and that you can use your faith as a defense to quench all the fiery darts let's see what those fiery darts are 
now when you study systematic theology listen um you come across a concept called the law of first mention are we together the law of first mention or first use and that means that when you want to examine a word a subject a topic an idea you go to the bible and find out where it was first mentioned either that word or that operation are we together now and see how it was used then that idea is what you use every other place that expression is used in the bible for instance every time you see dove in the bible is symbolic of the holy spirit so you see the first context of his usage satan has never been associated with the dove he's been associated with many things the vulture and so on and so forth like that are we together now so this when we go to the first recorded account of satan and man and the fall of man the warfare we see how satan used this fiery dart in genesis chapter 3 and this is what happened let's turn there can we look at it briefly <laughs> Hmm. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. We have some prayers to pray tonight. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more what? Subtle than all the beasts of the field which the Lord has made. And he, what did he use? What is his arrow? What is the arrow? What does he send to men? Words. Listen, listen, listen. Understand what I'm teaching you. The Bible says he said to the woman, Woman, yea, had God said. So we never see him beating the woman. We never see him molesting her like tying her hand. But what left him to her were words. Did God say ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden it's a question he engaged the woman in a conversation he made her listen to him and she replied verse 2 and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden verse 3 but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god had said remember he's forcing her to tell him what god said and he did not say it by saying what did god say he just asked a question that forced her to reveal. He wanted to know what information God told her. So that it will become the basis. Are you seeing that now? When Satan comes to you, he doesn't talk. He does something that makes you. He wants to hear what did God tell you. Because that's where the faith is. Listen. He said, what did God tell you? He said, but of the fruit of um, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither ye touch it lest you die so that's what god told her she memorized it and had it to heart next verse and the serpent said unto the woman what was he attacking the woman no he was not attacking the woman he was attacking the information upon which her confidence was upon listen carefully this is a warfare of informations he didn't say woman i want to attack you the woman was there and satan could not touch her because there was an information that became a shield her obedience to that information was what stopped satan so when satan come he said i want to know the, not you the information is what i want to attack and here he's saying that this is what god said and satan said that's it my attack is not on you my attack is on what is keeping you in pace with god if i can attack that thing i don't need to attack you something about your taking away the shield of faith will expose you are we together now and the bible says and the serpent said to the woman ye shall not surely die in other words forget about that thing god is saying it's nonsense let me give you another information and this is what he said verse 5 let me show you how satan operates now satan on hearing what god has told her is trying to reveal something to her for god doth know that in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil the fiery darts satan is creating a picture he's creating an idea that god is insecure 
he's just trying to tell you some things because he's insecure if you walk with the information i'm supplying you you will find out that you will suddenly become like a god hmm. verse six all that thing satan was saying listen to me was doing something to the woman it was taking away the shield of faith the proof that the shield had been taken was this when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes she had been looking at that tree all the time in in the, our idea of tree as we know and the bible says and the tree to be desired to make one wise this new information had entered her mind it's like a programming this woman had received another information he said then she acted what is faith conviction and the action you take based on it god told her something that was a persuasion as proposed by her husband and she kept acting on the word of god that for as long as she kept acting on what god said it was a shield satan could not touch her because god's integrity will make what she believed to remain and now satan says there's no way i can attack this woman i will give her another source he did not stop her from having faith he changed what she was having faith in now satan is not a fool many people say he's coming to attack your faith no satan has never had the business of attacking your faith he's trying to attack your faith in god you need faith to do anything even if it's to work with satan because faith is about the persuasion that comes from ideas and the action you take based on those ideas here's what he did to the woman and the bible says she gave it to her husband who was with her you see that adam was with her he was not somewhere roaming around in the wilderness love kept him there that's a subject for another day the woman fell as a result of deception the man fell as a result of love apostle peter taught us adam was not deceived it was eve that was deceived adam loved his wife and as a proof so the next time you say i love you till i die or fall inside a well or something this word is a luciferian spirit that that statement verse 7 verse 7 and the eyes of them both were open now the people who came and led prayer here cried that our eyes be open but who opened it you see that another information had created another idea satan never made any physical contact in as much as we know but he kept firing that and that did something to the woman and forced god to take an action against them think about it you can't accuse satan as it were satan said what did i do i only suggested to you and you believed it and put you in a position where god himself punishes you are we together now look how serious this thing is Luke chapter 4 quickly please we had considered that scripture Luke chapter 4 and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness next verse please and all of that he was tempted of the devil verse 3 and the devil what did satan do you see now again so you know where do you think satan learns this the idea of firing that through words have you read anywhere in your bible that he sent forth his word that he released his word and when his word got to people it did certain things to them satan understands the value of words that in this kingdom dominion is through words and what words do to men that's why jesus is called the word of god the word of god if thou be the son of god notice that when satan comes to you he tries to say something to you that will force you to reveal something god has said he is not interested in you because he knows that you on your own you cannot stand so he wants to see what is that shield that shield i'm going to soon show you he said if thou be the son of god command this stone to be bred 
and then Jesus answering him said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word and Satan said ah you know this scripture let's look at the third temptation please go to verse 6 and he brought him to Jerusalem and set him over the temple and said to him now watch this now if thou be the son of God cast yourself from hence verse 10 for it is written first time satan did not he just said if you are the son of god but now he said oh you are using scripture i know it too it is written he shall give his angels is that is that not true this is bible here satan is quoting the bible he shall give his angels charge so jesus don't you no longer have faith in the father what has happened to your faith that you cannot jump ah don't shame me don't fall my hand he said I'm aware that there are angels that protect you jump as a proof that you have faith if Jesus jumped something would have happened to him that will change the course of history <laughs> I know you are surprised that if Jesus had jumped do you know what made him the living logos ah. You know, if you read the Bible, don't just read the Bible for the sake of devotion. What would have happened if Jesus jumped? I know many of you would have, ah, no, no matter what, they would have come to catch him and all of that. See, they said we do not have a high priest who has not been tempted. Why will the Bible use that word for Jesus? Tempted like us, yet without sin. Meaning there was a possibility it would have happened. Are we together now? Yes. And Jesus, he said, for it is written. So, you see, Satan does not necessarily stop you from having faith. Because whoever gave you the shield is the one who defends it. So, Satan just changes the object of your belief and your conviction. And he leaves you there believing you have faith and destroy your life and wreck you. He knows what he's looking for. The shield of faith. Let me tell you this. The Bible never said having the shield of faith. It says taking it. There is something you are going to do. To be, do you know what the shield of faith is? The shield of faith is not the written word logos. The shield of faith is what God has told you. That he's committed to defend over the issue you want what god has told you that god looks at you and says joshua no man will be able to stand against you that is the word satan is looking for not just the one you just find anyhow in scripture there is a rima word there is a revealed word for you that is the basis of your lifting for instance god can look at a woman and before you had your children god can say i covenant with you that none of your child will be wayward that's what satan is looking for no matter all your bible study words he will not bother because the strength of your children's remaining is your believing that word the day you stop believing it you have taken away the shield of faith and given satan room to wreck your children are we together god gives you a word and says surely surely you will have your children and there will be no barrenness you will be surprised that satan is not interested satan is not interested in what is written he's interested in what god said to you not to everybody let me tell you something the proof that god is ready to walk with you is that he gives you something that is the basis of believing him there is nobody that rises in the kingdom without a revealed word from God that becomes the basis of your confidence you want to start a business you go to God and pray and while you are praying either the Holy Ghost speaks to you or you a scripture jumps out and that word you see is where the attack comes from Satan will begin to use things to fight that word the goal is to bring you to a point listen brothers and sisters warfare much more than the war of spirits 
is the war of information because your conviction is based on what your mindset is carved upon are we together words this kingdom is a kingdom of words men fall by words men rise by words men reign by words when you see a woman unbending satan is trying to whip her family bad news when satan went before god listen he said satan have you considered my servant job a man that feared god and eschewed evil what did satan say he said you have built a hedge around him go and find out what that hedge is it was a secret that god gave job that he obeyed every time and as long as he obeyed that secret it was not a secret for everybody it was a secret that was uniquely given he said job this is the secret of your prosperity someone else will do it it will not work it's a secret between me and you and for as long as job obeyed it satan called it a hedge no matter how he tried to attack job it didn't work and he said lord please make job to do something give me access to the hedge job lost everything only his wife was standing and satan now began to manipulate the wife so that the one last word that is left and job said no though he slay me yet i would trust him and satan said my god i thought i would finish this guy i had reduced him down the one last string that would give me victory over job job has refused he still held that shield like a man beaten and would not let it go and the bible says job had his life restored again you can frustrate satan by keeping what god said to you no matter what he says no matter listen every one of us here there are there are parents that god told certain things but the economic hardship is frustrating them now they are buying into another principle are you getting what i'm saying now the victory is always in what god said not just your action if you act by yourself you are on your own until god gives you the matching order you cannot take a step so every time we want to command victory in the spirit the first action is to build conviction not based on what god said to us what he said to you that you have received there are things god has said to me as a man of god and as a man that is the basis of my confidence there are things god has told me you see that he may not have told you that we have the bible generally that teaches us the character of god but i'm showing you a mystery just this on its own is not the shield of faith this is the whole armor is something about it that becomes a shield just carrying the bible and move you are carrying an armor but there is a way it can become a shield the moment the rhema comes to you that's a shield god says use it use it carry that shield stand before the labor market and say when i was praying before i rounded up service god told me that i will always cause men to lift you that's the word that's the shield of faith satan comes and says but if it is true that god said it don't you have an uncle that is in nmpc he's doing something to you he's not just challenging your faith he's challenging the word of god what he's doing is he's shifting the shield you are a sister and god gives you a word they shall obey and serve him he shall bless them and god said just serve me and me myself god this is not a word for every lady it's the word he gave you serve me and i will bring your husband that's what god says are we together now now look at this let me have your attention please this lady is serving god and all of a sudden satan comes with all kinds of gimmicks when satan comes and is looking at the workforce of that ministry he's not interested in the people what do they believe until you have revealed to satan what god has said he remains helpless so he has designed a way of finding out 
he because he knows that believers respond by confessing the word so he attempts to touch your life and hears what you say in response your speaking will tell him oh this is what god has said all right let's negotiate this is what god has said Ejimi, god said you will prosper did god say you will really prosper and then you say that and he says okay look at everything around you you have brain does it look like god and you say oh god you just took away the shield he will strike you in a way satan will never my bible says listen it says with the shield of faith if you refuse to bend it no matter what kind of that satan sends that shield that faith can quench it a spiritual man is not just the man that prays in tongues a spiritual man is the man that has mastered placing value on what god has said that you can hold it and say do he slay me madam you have all kinds of things the way we are looking at your case you may never have a child you say thank you doctor i understand you get back and say lord i remember i came for koinonia miracle service and you used a man of god to speak to me lord have you forgotten that you said i'm so before december i will have a child and satan uses a dream to try to change your mindset you have a dream and you see yourself losing a baby when you get up physically the devil now says how about that dream satan knows that images are the keys to killing men he will use images and whip your intelligence the bible says to be carnally minded is death so you look at your bank account and you look at it and you see that all you have is one thousand naira and god speaks to you and says son by the end of this year you will own a house and then the devil now tries to be scientific the word of god has the potency for accomplishment remember it's a sent word it's not a red word it's a sent word the word has become a messenger and every messenger must be obedient to his master remember the word of god is living so we are not talking of just a thing the word of god sent on Aaron. the angels follow that word to find out where the word needs their help to cooperate with it until it comes to pass your assignment is whilst that is you are the only one who can stop that word from coming to pass by taking away the shield there are many men of god who have taken away the shield of faith god told them things they saw things their eyes were open to revelations i've said it if i die today of sickness the last word that comes out of my mouth is by his stripes i am healed when we get to heaven god will either apologize to me for failing me or reveal to me where i missed it are you seeing that it says through faith time will fail me let me show you men who use this thing in the bible time will fail me to talk of gideon and jephthah and barak are we together is a man who through this faith subdued kingdoms joshua look at joshua and caleb he said we are able to go up at once yes there are giants but what did he tell us he said we are bringing you moses when you came from the secret place you said god said from from egypt the land of captivity to canaan to canaan not wilderness i won't die here it's true we saw the anarchies it's true we know they are not pure human beings but it says the shield can give you an ability an ability and satan fires his arrows and human beings even pity you but when everything is gone you lift up ah and you say i'm still standing oh you thought it would destroy the ministry but i'm still standing you thought it would destroy my home and satan says what do i do with this person now listen let me tell you this everybody you see lasting in the kingdom understands this how to use faith as a shield the word of god must become your new eyes tonight are you hearing what i'm saying that the same way you have an eye pick what god said and let that become your system of interpretation that you can sit down in your room no gary and yet you are rejoicing and satan says let's let's cry together because you are making a mockery of yourself he will even use believers 
this is what is dangerous he will use believers you better use your brain you are you are a stupid person you are just serving the lord like a fool you better settle down and he said no i know him i know him father if it be thy will but god already spoke to him he knows why you are coming to die nevertheless nevertheless and since i said no what do i do with him there is nothing satan can do with a man who will not find offense in god there is nothing satan can do to a man who will not blame god when satan pushes you and you do not charge god with guilt i tell you have this let me tell you this i don't know if you have been taught or not but hear me i found out a secret about satan he can be tired you know how a man can be frustrated have you ever seen a man trying to do something and he's frustrated you are trying to kick a car and after one hour this thing is not working and you just dump it that thing can happen to satan a believer can weary satan that satan will see you and mind himself it is true jesus did it and he left jesus for a season he said i'm tired there's something he has told me god there is nothing on earth that will dwindle me the bible calls one who has fallen to the prey of satan a double-minded man he said let that man not think he will ever receive anything that means that person if there's no it, whatever it is that he thinks you depend on men satan will use them to manipulate your mind god will tell you start this business and the devil tells you look be careful he will use it is written i hope satan spoke to god he will speak to you and you will hear him so don't you think every voice that speaks to you just because it is scriptures is of god the fact that you just had a scripture that you can get the verse and chapter does not mean it is god satan is not a fool when he comes to you he says and you know that wisdom is profitable to direct and you say oh, thank you holy spirit no no you need discernment discernment to know that although this is scripture this is against the revealed word to me something is wrong listen if you want to rise in life and you want to reign in life listen to what i'm telling you your dominion in the final analysis will be on the strength of your staying power to say i'm not bending if i perish here is that kind of statement satan doesn't want that's the kind of thing that drives him crazy when you say satan i'm angry he says oh, you are human you can change you come to church now and dance up and down but when satan sees your tears and you say satan if you are expecting to hear from me tomorrow that i've given up you are joking are we together job said though he slay me yet will i trust him all the days of my appointed time who told him the time was appointed i will wait until my change comes jesus said destroy this temple i'll build it in three days do you know why jesus resurrected it wasn't just because he was the son of god it was because the revealed word had declared that the grave would not be able to hold him there had to be jesus himself held on to a word in death and the word brought him back to life hear me believers the starting point of your victory is holding on to something that has been revealed something that god has said something that god has said there are things god has told me if god said it's a year of signs and wonders it can be a general word for everybody but in your place of prayer you will hear something from that word that becomes your word it's up to you now to hold it and say lord i thank you it's a great peace of day that feared that fear him in nothing in nothing in nothing do you know there's a revelation that i have and god gave me that revelation luke 10 19 he says behold behold this is god talking to me not not believers god is talking to me joshua selman behold see conceive as a reality in your spirit i give you power upon snakes and scorpions to tread upon snakes and scorpions and every power of the enemy that's your revelation let me tell you my own and nothing shall by any means 
what is by any means mention the means of transportation you have air you have land mention the means by which satan can use to afflict people covenant whatever it is your own faith level self the bible says by any means hurt you i can't believe this one for you but it's the revelation that keeps with me that's the reason a herbalist can call my name in the shrine and die for nothing reduce his lifespan while i'm sleeping i'm not even praying about it because even in my sleep there is a shield you see it's not something you wake up and hold listen i have said it for a long time there is no mortal man born of a woman that can kill me it's not pride i'm standing on something god told me it's not just i shall not die but live that's a general revelation there is something god told you that you hold god told bishop oyedeko go and build a fifty thousand capacity sitter it cannot be done humanly but that was a revealed word and regardless of the odds he kept that shield of faith and in nine months that word came to pass satan notwithstanding god declared a word to us as a ministry declared a word over the teachings over the things we are doing and we have kept that shield of faith no matter what it is kept what you see today is a product of the staying power of faith tonight's call is a call to take back your shield do you know why he said take it back because for some of you you've thrown it he said take it take it take it take it apostle god told me by november i'll be smiling take it i remember a lady that i i spoke to i can't remember uh, we were joking with her and i told her i said by december this year you'll be heavy and the lady was smiling and all of that and i said you see that now you didn't believe it and we we're cracking jokes with her now if i'm joking it will come to pass you see that because i'm human i can joke doesn't mean that everything i say is the word I, i'm a human being we can play and joke but when it is the revealed word of god and you hold it god will surprise you you hear all this maybe miracle alerts and all of that it's unfortunate for people who, who don't believe this thing can happen the word of god except it is not sent if the word of god is sent brothers and sisters once you hold that shield just be watching satan like elijah while they are crying on bile from morning look at elijah was mocking them his shield was there secured he knew what to do he knew the mysteries that will bring fire he was not guessing and he said call on your god you only mock satan when your shield is there and you look at him and say satan look at how elijah mocked them and said maybe he's sleeping call on him louder and when it was time he didn't just start saying lord and you don't disappoint me no he said set me the altars i know what to do bring 12 stones put water on them put the sacrifice and he cried upon the god of heaven and fire came and licked it faith is not mechanical there is no faith when there is no revealed word there is no faith when there is no revealed word. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm careful when I'm sharing testimonies like this. One day, I was praying. I was praying in the spirit very deeply. And all of a sudden, the word of the Lord came to me. And this is what the Lord said. He said, I am sending 1,000 titers to the ministry and 1,000 titers to your life. The word. I said, what is the meaning of this? I wrote it down. 1,000 titers to the ministry. 1,000 titers to your life as people people in the ministry are more than that and then i went to sleep and all of a sudden in my eye i started seeing business organizations and individuals 
and all of that saying the lord spoke to us to come and be paying tight some to your house some to you and i got up i said lord is this it and the lord said if you believe it and you receive it i will surprise you you don't have to know where they will come from you see that and all of a sudden i said lord i'm a believer i take your word brothers and sisters it was like a charm hello is this koinonia this is so 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 and so company in lagos am i speaking to this and that um you are apostle joshua selman please give us the ministry account number the lord instructed us as a business that the tithe of this company for as long as we exist should come to the ministry and god said keep counting i said one thousand not just people giving you see that listen i'm I, that's why i say i'm sorry if it sounds arrogant but i'm telling you you reign by the word you receive you reign by when god sends it you can reject it a word was sent through gabriel to mary the holy ghost will come upon you she would have said get out please and that's it the holy ghost would have gone to look for another virgin somewhere and said this this mary she has not but mary said be it unto me according to your word do you know the controversy that followed that word mary you are pregnant who got you pregnant a ghost you are joking it's either joseph or one rabbi she said no god told me an angel just appeared to me and god kept his word and jesus was born many of us would have birthed certain things if only you held that shield when it was one week for the prayer to be answered you gave in to satan and you threw the shield tonight my assignment in this prayer is that we are taking back that shield lord i've become a believer again i remember what you told me in 1992 i don't know what took my attention away but lord i'm remembering it again some of you when you go back there are the old notebooks that you wrote things that god said god described your destiny but because it was too big you just closed it quietly go back tonight take back that shield lord i'm a believer take it and watch satan watch faith rubbish satan in your life listen in this prayer and fasting i'm demystifying satan for you the honor that has satan is human satan is a man he's not just a spirit he was once listen satan was once the head of a civilization on earth what jesus was sent to represent there was a day satan was sent to do it satan one time was sent on earth to be the revelator of the love of god to the then inhabitants that's what gave him the authorization to capture the people and say this god up there have you ever seen him am i not the one representing him that's why romans say who shall say let's go up and bring him down for us the word is nigh thee. christ himself came and said let it not be that god does not want to come to men now i have come not an angel i have come by myself the garden of eden was not created for adam and eve the first occupant of the garden of eden is satan ezekiel 28 that was in eden the garden of the lord he was there because of our wrong believing we have given more power to satan than should be i told us yesterday i know some of you don't believe it that there are angels today that have fallen that have nothing to do with satan it was not satan that threw them they were rebels another group of angels they are bound today in everlasting chains the devil and his demons are not bound in chains there are demons today now that are bound in chains the only reason why satan has not been bound is because there was a time given to respect his will for choosing to reject god when jesus was going to cast out the demons in gadara he said have you come to destroy us respect the rules there is a time but the time is not yet so what you can do now is to cast them and create a system of keeping them at bay the destruction as it were is something that there is a time appointed god respects it 
that's what makes satan looks powerful so he comes to you and said i am indestructible are you not seeing god's frustration in destroying me it is not god's it was michael that casted him down not even god you wait and see how god destroys satan it is fire that will come from his mouth and consume the creature flood will never happen on earth again it is now the ministry of fire are we together now it is with fire that lucifer will be destroyed so god's withholding him or withholding his hands from lucifer is not a sign of weakness but he takes advantage of our ignorance and makes it look like his continual dominion is proof that god is weak there is a time he has been conquered for the saints but his ultimate destruction will be done by god's sovereign power when the time appointed has reached but with the power and the strength of the word of God, you can keep him at bay. You can keep him. That's why I cast out devils here and I drive safely. I go home and sleep. Otherwise, they are supposed to appear to me and say, since you casted us in Koinonia, we are here in your house. Beg them to come. If you ever meet them, this is not just some bold statement. Beg, say, Satan, please come. You can know this thing and carry your shield and pass Satan and he will pass you and he will move. Brothers and sisters, Satan is not what we think he is. He has used words, he has sent fiery darts into the minds of preachers, into the minds of book writers and they have in error magnified him beyond the proportion of his true size. By light we are bringing him down to say look satan your only strength is in your ability to capture the belief of the saints and manipulate their understanding so the real warfare is not physical the real warfare is using the shield of faith to maintain that truth of god's word and that in maintaining it you force the integrity of god to appear in the scene Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because we are going to pray tonight. Satan's greatest weapon is doubt, unbelief. He manipulates your mind. He knows what your eyes can do. He knows what your ears can do. These are the gates to his dominion in your life. He sends those fiery darts. He uses dreams. He uses your physical experience. He uses the news you hear. And they just tell you, look, in the world now, it is ratio four ladies to one man. So the chances of a lady married, he uses the media to sell you that information. While you are reading the article, you are imagining yourself four rows behind. And then he tells you, look, um, just know that there is no marriage for you. And if at all it happens, you cannot have a child. There are women who believe once they are past 45, 50, they can't have a child again. And information proposed it to a territory. We have doctors here. So based on what you, it's, it's an opinion, but it's an educated opinion. Are we together? Yes. So a man, you go to the hospital and a woman, and they say you are impotent and you are barren. Look at the reports and you look at it and Satan steals into that conversation and says, see it, you to use your brain. What is, are you, didn't you go to school? Based on what they taught you, what is the analysis? But at that point, you lift the shield of faith and said there is another report he said whose report many many people will give you reports satan will give you reports science will give you reports your culture will give you reports well-meaning believers will give you report but whose report will you believe i choose his report i choose his report i choose his report i know what he's told me i choose his report forever oh lord thy word is settled forever oh lord thy word is settled forever oh lord thy word is settled he told joshua no man shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life and so when an angel appeared to joshua joshua removed the knife he said are you for us or against us he would have killed that angel the word of god on joshua would have killed that angel if he did not explain he said no calm down calm down because he was moving on a word if it be thou bid me come come and he started walking on the wall and the moment he satan did not take him out of the river 
he only took his face away and he started to sing listen let me challenge everyone my brother my sister it will take faith to be established in this life brothers let me tell you this there is no guarantee anywhere that is a job that will lift you there is no guarantee anywhere that is even your business that will lift you you will need to take a shield of faith the statistics are scary if you believe them you will never build a house forever if you believe them you will never own one land let me talk to my brothers first sisters we can come to you but let me talk to my brothers because the world is selling us a lie and we are believing those garbages i don't have any godfather anywhere i don't have anybody anywhere ah this god this god that can pick a man from the dung hill overnight when a young man prospers fast people get angry i don't believe in all kinds of wrong schemes and all of that but let no one fool you that god does not give people speed of lifting an establishment don't let anybody come and say take uh, take it easy what they mean is be careful for something and the bible says, be careful for nothing take it easy when you are 45 and you buy your first car it's all right you can give god glory for as your child can go to another school doesn't make sense doesn't matter what they teach as soon as you can afford it's a proposition don't just see it as an information is a that but when you believe god's report we have been taught that everything in life you buy it so all you are looking at is money not god but the bible says they got the land in possession not by their own sword neither did their arm save them that the god of heaven can arise when you teach people superior spiritual strategies they will ignore it that's what makes people get angry once you see a young man with the blessing of the lord everybody starts getting angry and suspecting and an bitter hatred because they they don't know what what formula did you route this possibility from no sir it is unto you according to your faith it is not unto us it is unto you blessed is she that believes for unto her not her and her neighbors unto her alone there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken 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 we are going to pray i'm taking out time this is not a little issue at all you ignore it you will fail in life brothers and sisters listen the fierceness of today's world satan has captured the media he has captured every mechanism that transfers information to men you just need to go out and there's unbelief everywhere wake up in the morning the news is unbelief go around the news is unbelief enter a lecture hall unbelief your job unbelief you must say no i reject that report i reject that report there are people today they said nigeria is in a recession they started going down they are not even working for nigerian government but just because they they received the report they started whether or not there was a recession the truth is they are not even doing anything they just believed and went down i reject it ah the bible says there was darkness in egypt but in goshen the light when the angel of death was slaughtering people like animals there were people in goshen who were moving and enjoying you can exempt yourself not only by light not only by the sword of the spirit you can hold the shield of faith you can use your faith not just as an instrument to receive things but it keeps you until the word of god manifests hallelujah do you believe what i've shared with you rise up on your feet let's pray Sing it two more times. Are you ready?
ready to pray the first prayer point is that you are going to pray and say i sanctify my eyes and my ears i command you to refuse any report that is not of the lord lift your voice and pray i command a sanctification that my eyes be purged with eyes out that the gates of my ears come on that divine covering lift your voice and pray I command it I command it my eyes and my ears immune to the influence of fear and doubt Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare tonight that I am a believer. A believer of God's word. God cannot lie. God cannot fail. Therefore, every spirit of doubt of fear of unbelief I cast you out of my life now lift your voice and pray I command fear I command doubt my God is alive my God is alive my God still prospers my God still heals my God still delivers my God still restores I believe, I believe, I believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe the word of God, then let's pray three or four scriptures that can be for us as a rema word that we hold on to. Ready? Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Psalm 112. There is a prayer I want us to pick out from there and cry to God. He said it's a year of signs and wonders. Don't mind the naysayers. Don't mind those who mock you. He said, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands. Number two. This is the first prayer point. He said, your seed is not just your child your ideas your business your goals is whatever comes from him his seed shall be mighty lift your voice and say my seed i command you to be mighty lift your voice and pray your ideas your influence i command my seed be mighty Spiritual seed, be mighty. Financial seed, be mighty. He prays, the seed shall be mighty. I command it, I declare it. I will not be small. My children will not be small. Prophesy it. Koinonia will not be small. The waters will not be small. My seed shall be mighty. 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 I believe it. I believe it. 
Hallelujah. Do you believe what you just prayed? Yes, sir. Because when I say seed, ladies say I don't carry the seed, I only receive it. So the devil will deceive you in not praying. No, seed is not just for men alone. Your seed is anything that proceeds. Listen, one of the ways to command influence is through your seed. You send your seed on assignment. Bill Gates sent his seed on assignment. Zuckerberg sent his seed on assignment. Wisdom is justified by her seed, her children. Listen, in life, if you are the only one who is mighty, you have failed. It is the might of your seed that maintains your position nobody rises alone you rise alone in your family and all those under you don't rise and watch them bring you down again by themselves he said his seed we are going to pray it again lord the spirit of smallness the spirit of mediocrity that keeps me and everything that proceeds from me small i curse it in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray my ideas my dreams my seed shall be mighty my seed shall be mighty my seed shall be mighty. My seed must be mighty. My seed must be mighty. In the name of Jesus, everything that proceeds from Koinonia must be mighty. The teachings mighty. The revelations mighty. The miracles mighty. Give us the next verse. I want you to pray this scripture. It says wealth and riches. They are not the same thing. Wealth is different from riches. It says both of them. You can have wealth and not have riches. When you have a great idea in your mind, you have wealth. But if there's no money in your pocket, you are wealthy, but you are not rich. You can have money but no idea, no system of replenishing. He said both wealth and riches will be domiciled. They won't be visitors. That means wealth and riches are spirits. You can call them and say you are welcome. Hey. Just like goodness and mercy. Lift your voice and call them forth. Lift your voice. The Bible says wealth and riches shall be my I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Wealth and riches shall be in Pannonia for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the kingdom. Wealth and riches shall be in my life, shall be in my house, shall follow my children, my children's children. Hallelujah. The last verse is a prayer that many people don't understand. It's a waste in life if you spend your life building something that in one day just crashes. There is a spirit that destroys the good works of men. The Bible says his righteousness endures. His righteousness, his good works, the testimony of your impact remains forever. There are people who are in ministry for 30 years. Then in one month, something happens around your life and crashes everything destroys the testimony forever you are going to lift your voice and say what the lord do it he do it forever in my life there is no rising to the going down to God. So lift your voice and pray his righteousness and just forever Hey, 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 hey,
Hallelujah. Was he praying against the spirit of poverty? Isaiah 45. Verse 2 and 3. Isaiah 45. Please be angry and pray. Don't join the people who have kept people in, in penury and destroyed the heritage of the faith upon their life. He says, I will go before thee and make the crooked path straight. He says, I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Verse 3. And I will give thee, Christ, I will give thee the treasures, the treasures of darkness. Brothers and sisters, this is not a parable. It's not a parable. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I the Lord which called thee by name I am the God of Israel and say Lord the hidden riches that belongs to me I'm ready to receive it in this season for my family for the gospel for the kingdom pray the hidden riches, the hidden riches in secret places that my father could not find, that my mother could not find, that my lineage could not find. Open down my eyes that I may see. Open down my eyes that I may see. Hallelujah. We are praying scriptures. Isaiah 58. Give us verse 11 and 12. Powerful prayer. Isaiah 58 verse 11 I'm giving you shields that you stand upon and the Lord shall guide thee continually there are people whose lives are suffering today because they lack divine guidance thou shalt hear a voice from behind everybody's running this way you run and crash with them he says the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in recession that when there is drought he will not only give you, he will satisfy your soul and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a well-watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Verse 12. And they that shall be of thee, thy seed again. You see that now? And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations thou shalt be called the repairer that in this family nobody ever rose but all of a sudden there is somebody called the repairer the fixer of the cost the repairer of the tragedy lift your voice and pray this lift your voice and pray the repairer of the bridge the repairer of failed marriages the repairer of destructive destinies <laughs> Ibala, 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 Ibala,
If I were you, I would pray this next prayer with all my heart. Isaiah chapter 60. We are reading from verse 10 to 14. In fact, 10 to 15. Listen, brothers and sisters. Believe everything you are about to read. These things are not something that was written to some ancient people. Hear what the Bible says. And the sons of strangers who will build koinonia. Who will build your house? No, you can choose to save for it. You can believe that strangers can arise. Listen. The sons of strangers, the seed of strangers shall build thy walls. They are kings. The word minister is so, so into your life. They are kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor I've had mercy on thee. Next verse. Therefore, Kabarakatoskia, thy gates shall be open continually. Listen, it says they shall not be short. That's why you can sleep in the night and still wake up with an alert. It said day, night. That men, who are those who will bring it? Men. That men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles and their kings may be brought. We are reading to verse 15 quickly. For the nation and the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Next verse 14. It says the the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir tree, the pine tree, the box together uh, to beautify where? The place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. 14, we are reading to 15. The sons of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves at the sole of thy feet they shall call thee the city not a person not a jimmy that you were born in a cave but right now you are a city he says the city of the lord the zion a one man becoming a city 15. whereas thou has been forsaken and hated so that no man went through thee I will make thee an eternal excellency a joy of many generations open your mouth and turn it to your prayers Lord, I one isaiah we're going to pray just two more prayer points and we're done listen you're going to lay your hands on your head your head is a symbol of your glory listen the bible says arise it's a command if you don't rise you are in disobedience it say arise do you know what arise means come out come out of limitations limiting beliefs 
in the next one minute i'd like you to bless and prophesy that my glory arises i command Your glory arises in newer dimensions, greater dimensions, in ministry arise, in business arise, in influence arise, in power arise. Listen, before we take the last prayer point, let me give you an assignment tonight. As much as God grants you grace, eh? find like four or five scriptures tonight. Don't just snow yourself into tomorrow. Are we together? One of the best ways to pray faith prayers is to pray scriptures directly. Yes, just find a scripture and pray it in tongues till it leaches onto your destiny. That's how I pray sometimes. I just begin to speak directly. Lord, this is what you said. I believe it. And you watch the God of wonders arise and surprise you. Are we together? I began to feel strongly my spirit after I went back yesterday. That the Lord was leading us to pray, especially along the area of this release from financial captivity. Huh? We are spiritual people yes, and we sir. love the Lord. But let me tell you the truth. There is no dominion if God does not free you and free your hand and free your children. One of the greatest ways to be a slave is to keep you a beggar. Are we together? He said the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower, the borrower believer, the borrower tongue talker remains a slave to the lender this is not some money mongering ambition of people who don't love god these are people who understand the systems of the kingdom are we together now yes so we're still going to be dealing with these things i believe if god grants grace subsequently but for now we're just going to pray one last prayer one last prayer there's a separate i'm sure that between now and friday i don't know which of the days but god will grant us time to pray on it but the last prayer that i want us to pray is found in luke 6 38 the b part the b part of luke chapter 6 and verse 38 good measure press down listen shaken together give us amplified look at what amplified writes very funny and very interesting good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall they pour into the pouch formed uh, or whatever it is and all of that it says for with the same measure you meet that's the same measure that will be given to you uh, there's a version that says um, shaken together to create space for more but for time's sake it says shall men go back to to king james the word men is the word i want us to pray tonight good measure press down joshua selman 
shaken together running over shall men shall shall where will the alert come from the favor the breakthrough the job the access say in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I prophesy to the north I prophesy to the north I prophesy to the south I prophesy to the south I prophesy to the east I prophesy to the east I prophesy to the west I prophesy to the west every man every man anointed by God anointed by God to lift me to lift me to bless me to bless me to open a door for me tonight I call you into my life open your mouth and pray good measure good measure in business good measure in ministry good measure in your job in your career good measure in your family good measure Press down, shaken together, running over. Shall men in Zaria, shall men in Kaduna, shall men in Lagos, shall men in London, shall men in US, men in, 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 in Asia, shall men in the village, men in the city, men on the mountain, men in the valley. Believers, unbelievers alike, shall men bring. I call on the gift of men. I place a demand on the gift of men in my life, in this ministry. I call on the gift of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. There are many challenges that our loved ones are in now. It's only a man sent by God, not called by you, sent by God that will take you out. He said there was a man sent from God. His name was John. Sent from God. There is a helper sent from God to the Adegbeye family. There is a helper sent from God to so 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 and so there is a helper listen nobody helps you just because they know you don't let anyone fool you they can know you and say i'll see you tomorrow nobody just helps you like that in this wicked world that we live in but there is a man he can even be a cyrus sent from god listen everybody that has risen in life will tell you they met a man who fell in love with them yes, sir. and let me tell you how you know it is of God is that it does not make sense yes, there is no reason why that man should be committed to you that's how you know this one is the finger of God yes, what is house that God cannot send a man to give what is a car that God cannot send a man to give what is school fees that God cannot send a man to pay what is house rent honestly speaking listen to me shall men give there was a man sent to Joshua Selman from God like a man sent on assignment there were many widows in Zarephath but I don't know what that widow did that made God send Elijah to her People have been sent to this ministry and my goodness they have done things in this ministry we will never recover from sent by God not even members of koinonia there was a man sent from God hear me yo this is the antidote to a life of hardship and struggle you can call people but the day God sends a man it will not make sense he will sit in your house you are not around but you will remain there till evening. Who are you, sir? I had a dream, oh, God sent me to you. And he said, I should help you. That you must rise. Do you know my father, sir? That's even, the man himself, the, 
the sendee is surprised he doesn't even know why he's coming to you ah. listen we are praying and we are rounding up but I want to say this my prayer for you is that God will do something in your mind to make you believe it is men that lift men it is God that gives the instruction but the physical lifting is by men the position you need to rise to now there is a hand already that can lift it hallelujah someone was producing eggs real eggs just a woman started a business with poultry and was producing eggs and was crying that God will help her true story all of a sudden she was she was even passing and she felt led to enter a church and they were praying or something when they finished she just greeted somebody who gave her a lift she did not know that that man was the owner of a hotel a new hotel that just started and from that time the man told that she would be the sole supplier of everything poultry to that hotel now you would think you are doing the same business with a woman that man is not doing business with her he's a millionaire he's helping her there are men who do things not because they want anything they want to help you are we together i have seen the help of men someone will look at you and say do you have a company you say no sir you say why you say come there is something i want to make sure you are part of it so that you will get something you will think the something is 10 naira until you see what comes out of it you will run home and say everybody rejoice they are crying say don't cry for what rejoice god has answered us god answers men by sending men are we together you can be planning your marriage and somebody just gets up and says bring me the total budget how much is it he says i is three million he said i'm surprised with recession is still three million uh, I will do something about it. You think he's going to give you cow of 120,000 until you see an alert of 4 million. You say, sorry, I couldn't do much. Look at me. I want to be very honest with you. You belong to this ministry. How do you think we run this ministry? Have you ever thought about it? Be very honest. There is a supply that can come from heaven oh. there is a supply you see our our muslim brothers who come with their buses and stay for hours they are not stupid to come and park for 30 minutes and be watching and then carry you happily back if there is nothing coming to them that rewards all the time they are staying make just one more time make make Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare over your life. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus that everything that sways your belief about God, every lie the devil is using to cheat you, I command that the shield of faith works for you. In the name of Jesus. And because you have believed the word of the Lord that he has declared, I call men in the name of Jesus. You see, I think it was Isaac or Shadi, I can't remember which of them. While they were leading prayers, they shared something powerful. God allocates times for the manifestations of things. Isaac sowed and within that period, the required period of harvest, it worked. 
there is no reason why you should get to day eight god is not stupid he didn't say eight days he said seven days i decree and declare that between now and friday wherever these men are if they are on earth i call them to you in the name of jesus christ i call them to your family tonight i release dreams to their lives i release visions about you to them i decree and declare they will arise tonight and surprise you lying down and I was sleeping I was so tired just returned from a trip and I had someone physically entered the room I couldn't wake up I thought it was a vision and the only thing I know was the person held my head just hugged my head I said no it can't be a thief this is not an arm robber it's not a vision and that was the end of it just held my head like tapping someone tapping a child and that was the end of it. You see, those of you, especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time, you'll be wondering, what is, what is going on here? Brothers and sisters, whether we believe it or not, there is a move of the Spirit that is sweeping across the earth. You can exempt yourself. It doesn't mean that God will not do it. There are people who started with God, but they've left these things since. Because it was not the whole idea was just to use God and get ministry others it was just to make them successful so they started with God others they were inheriting ministry from their parents I thought about my life truly speaking when dr. Billy Graham went to be with the Lord and I said one day our children's children if Christ tarries, will be the ones talking about us when we are gone. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Sing it from the depth of your heart. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home. Sing it one more time. Come and make my heart your home.
once I have made I know that has taken my heart Sing that part one more time Yes, I will lay down my idols The thrones I have made and everything that has taken my heart Sing, Lord, I will bow. Lord, I will bow to you. To no But you, Lord. Lord, I will worship you. Sing it. Lord, I will worship you. Nothing. is used to trivializing you and all you are. But Lord, tonight we truly confess that you are everything. Please don't mind our pride. We act as though we can do without you. The truth is we cannot do without you whether we admit it or not it is the truth for no man no man can do anything against the truth but for the truth Lord Jesus tonight we thank you for the things you are about to do but Lord our focus tonight first and foremost is our hearts there are people thousands of people scattered across this arena and several others following from different nations of the world Lord please take our hearts please take our hearts we are wasting our time if we do not hand our hearts over to you hallelujah I'm hearing a song in my spirit what can Wash
Hallelujah. Now, I want to make an altar call. Gone are the days where people just cajole people. You know, when people come like this, I know many of you have heard of the miracles. Many of you will experience it. God wants us to experience it. But let me tell you this. I have noticed that most of those who live long are not miracle workers. In fact, most healing evangelists did not cross 80. Yes, it's true. Those who really, really enjoyed the grace for longevity are people who are interested in the souls of people. Hallelujah. Now, nothing wrong with miracles. We're going to be experiencing the hand of God shortly. But it came strong upon our being concerned about the fact that there are people who are really going to hell. It's not a lie. It's true. Whether you believe it or not, it's not the issue. I can argue that there's no oxygen in the air. It does not stop it. There are some of you looking at me right now. The overflow, the truth of the matter is that at your current state, without missing words, it is true that it is not heaven you are going to. The goal is not to scare you. This is not the issue of scaring. It is the truth. There is nothing to scare you about. It is true. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which was the book of life. Listen carefully. Whosoever's name. It's on earth yet that we celebrate people, Apostle Joshua Selman, whosoever's name was not found. He was not asked why his name was not there. If your name was not there, that's the end of it. Are we together? Listen, look, this is a very serious, serious issue. There has to come a time in a man's life when you break your pride. And say Jesus I need you I don't care whether you have been a preacher for donkey years I'm not asking you how many sick bodies you killed I'm not asking you what name your members call you are we together there are people outside overflow one two three the truth is there are people who need Jesus Christ and a day is going to come whether we like it or not that day the very judge of the earth is coming it's coming if he said it in his word then it is true mm. come out and be serious with god be serious with god it's amazing how people come out for altar call they come out for altar call and you see them playing around and you know they are not serious i'm not saying you must cry but there is an attitude of seriousness you don't play games with god are we together I want you to run to Jesus like there's fire on the mountain because there really is. One. Two. Apostle, I'm ready to break my pride and humble myself. It's not a call to condemnation. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, make your way. I've cried for my own life. My own life as a man of God. I've cried and rolled in the presence of God, crying for my own life. So don't, don't think that this is just some showmanship. Three, make your way. It's not by force. It's not compulsory. You can choose to sit down, but you can choose to say, let tonight be that night. Lord, you have to win this war over my life. Four, the Holy Spirit is still speaking to people. You may have money. You may have anointing. You may have cars. But let me tell you this. The Bible says if your hope is only in this life, you are of all men, of all politicians, of all businessmen, of all men of God miserable. There has to be a cry from your heart. Lord, I need you is a sign of humility. Is there someone still joining them? Very quickly, I want to pray. Your coming to Jesus means I am ready to close the door to all the friends and personalities in my life that are not ready to head my direction. 
your coming to Jesus is a revelation that Lord I am ready to be serious with you it's not just you are coming as a preamble to receiving a miracle and then you run back no in plenty and in none leaving you is no longer an option in my life hallelujah I want to lead you some of you are crying let me tell you this if you have any loved one who is not saved I hope their names and your prayer request because I know that some of us if I ask you what is on your prayer request now the only thing is wife husband promotion and and there's nothing wrong with that but let me tell you this is is funny but from heaven you will still see your loved ones in hell you will know they are the ones it's not that you are going to look at them and say i don't know i don't it's a lie you will know that this one is my mother this one now you can't do anything about those who have gone but there are people now you know in your neighborhood around your life it is the lord's desire that all men be saved please if you are a pastor here take the issue of soul winning seriously be careful all these things we learn around in the name of mentorship i believe in be careful many people are veering off there is some there is a path that brings power and grace at the end of your life you don't want to be a wise master builder be, be careful the flamboyant does not necessarily mean god is there be careful especially for some of us who are younger ministers we must be wise you don't just swallow everything hook line and sinker just because it is being done no sir no sir no sir no sir there are churches where an altar call is not made for more than two years then one day they organize one hilarious pretentious revival and then just draw one or two people it's a joke it's a joke more than healing more than miracles more than getting a job more than all of this is the eternal destiny of men i am interested in knowing that i'm not praying for someone going to hell it's a waste i'm interested in knowing that i'm not teaching someone a principle to prosper when he's already gone to hell it's a waste I will teach you about the finances and the kingdom life when we know that your eternal destiny is secure. Those of us who are standing, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, just one prayer before I pray for them. Lord, make me serious with you. Make me serious with you. Please pray. It's a very serious prayer. There are some of us, you are not going to hell but the truth of the matter is you are not serious with God. No. Mm -mm. There's nothing about God that, that can steal your passion. It's not priority. You see people function in the house of God and you say, oh, these ones is because they are called into ministry. There's no such thing as that. It's your hunger. Especially for some of us sisters, we have to pray. Lord, make me serious with you. I don't care how many men like you. I don't care what they have told you. If you are not serious with God, your life is in shambles. It's true. Lord, make me serious with you. Let nothing else sustain the ability to take your place in my life that's a very good prayer hallelujah come live in me oh my love take hold Come live in me and I will rise Hallelujah. You are 
parent here yeah, when your children get to the age of discretion the moment they can think and they can understand lead them to Jesus consciously it is very responsible lead them to Jesus if you have not done so as you go back home don't just say my children are smart call them preach the gospel to them the moment they, are, they can think they should be born again please be take let nobody stay in your roof you have a neighbor that is squatting with you he's not serious it doesn't matter no it does no it does no it does they can choose to reject Jesus that's all right no one goes to hell because he's a sinner everybody goes to hell because he rejected Jesus that is the sin that takes men to hell I rejected him I had a choice but I rejected him Jesus carry your load and walk out of my life those of you in front here I truly appreciate you whatever you have in this life if Jesus is not above it is useless let me just tell you the truth I want to lead you in an honest prayer I know some of you are crying overflow one two three those online please listen I'm not asking you whether you're a business mogul I'm not asking you whether you have how many degrees all those things are useless when you are no longer here I'm going to lead you in an honest prayer and I want you to pray from the depth of your heart listen to what you are saying and pray it loud are you ready now say after me with all your heart passionately Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart this night I make up my mind and I make a commitment to serve you and to live for you from today till eternity I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life I declare that my sins are forgiven I declare that the life of God eternal life is mine today Holy Spirit I receive you as the life of God in my spirit I declare that I'm a child of God forever let me pray for you father I thank you for these ones they have unashamedly come the Bible says that if you are ashamed of me before men I'll be ashamed of you before my father Jesus speaking Lord these ones have come opening their hearts genuinely to receive of your grace I ask you oh God you who is the helper of us all help them I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the righteousness of God is at work in you the grace to live a victorious Christian life the grace for passion and intimacy with God is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ every pain and every legal access the devil has over your life is hereby broken forever in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I congratulate every one of you now listen I know that some of you are rededicating your life to Christ there are a number of you those in here I just want you to walk out this way and then the various overflows I know that there are people attending to them they will have your details I praise you very quickly and you return back to join us in the service I salute you thank you so much for your courage your life will never be the same God bless you please direct them make sure someone is directing them make sure someone is directing them hallelujah amen please sit down hallelujah there are two ministries that I believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension two very great anointings I really believe with all my heart and and it's been confirmed from different people seasoned veterans of the gospel 
across the earth number one is the healing ministry i believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry it's true even some of us that supposedly walk in it the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry the healing ministry i'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray we'll get to the business of the night the healing ministry is very important it played a major role the challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer christ and his purposes because the healing ministry is a means is a sign that points men to jesus it's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the Christ himself the second ministry that I believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance It's true this wealth transfer that you've heard people say I believe that God has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant God releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money are we together the average person's idea about money is just some kind of um, it is just a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that I am successful there is a place for that but if that is the scope of your idea then you do not need any wealth transfer are we together yes so god must first walk upon our hearts is the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in zaria angelic feathers gold dust silver dust you know people started having these strange encounters and one, I remember one night the Lord told me, he said, I'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry. It didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn. People will go to pray and for hours, all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality. And God said, no, if I don't take it away, one demon will give a, an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people and so god withdrew that experience god only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so God will not release it until the body is taught. The money is safer with Bill Gates. It's safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors. Because they have worked on their minds. They are better treasurers for God than us. So all, it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming. But not, not some money monger kind of thing. It won't come that way anyway i just thought to share that let's look at the ministry of jesus luke chapter 6. i study the gospels a lot because the ministry of jesus inspires me he's the greatest model that i have and i like to i like to study his idea what did he do what was captured in his ministry luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19. luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 19 this is jesus now having the sermon on the mount okay i'll just read it from here and he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples a great multitude of people listen out of all judea and jerusalem and from the sea coast of tyre and sidon who came to hear now listen carefully the people came to hear amplified says to listen to him 
He came to hear him and to be healed. There is a relationship between hearing and being healed. They didn't just come to be healed. They came to hear and to be healed. Verse 18. Or still verse 17. To be healed of all their diseases. 18. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits. So we see the kind of people that came for Jesus' meetings. Those who were sick. They were sick. Terribly diseased. They came to listen to him. There was something he taught them about listening to his words. And the healing power of God. So they came to hear and to be healed. The second category of people we see. They that were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed. Unclean spirits. The source of their pain and their discomfort. Were the presence of unclean spirits. And the Bible says. And the whole multitude. Listen. Sought to touch him. Why? For there went power out of him to heal them. I love the ministry of Jesus. So the Bible tells us why the people got healed. That there was power. Other versions say virtue. There was something that Jesus had that would leave him into the people. And the moment it entered them, they would discover that their sicknesses were gone. Are we together? Acts chapter 10, when you read verse 38, Peter was teaching. That was the salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Listen, it says who went about doing good. Went about doing good. Went about doing good. So we see other things that Jesus did that were not captured. He didn't just heal the sick alone. He didn't just deliver the oppressed alone. He went about doing good. Breakthrough is a good thing. Restoration is a good thing. He went about doing good. And then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus' ministry. And, and by the way, I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry. Jesus' ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven. Are we together now? He said it is expedient that I go. Why? So that the comforter will come. It is to your advantage, advantageous to you that I go. Because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the spirit himself without measure so that we can partake of that spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the Father had sent me, this is Jesus speaking, the Father sent me, I now send you, as the Father sent me, both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The Father sent me with power and every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, is fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and they're wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick we expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results at some point in this service we should see the superiority of light over darkness is that true 
at some point in this service God should be able to step over your issue to see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this just like that is that true if that happens then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of Jesus but listen to me brothers and sisters if this does not happen we are wasting God's time and we are wasting the time of God's precious people that's why we prepare for all of the meetings especially the miracle service because you have not just come to watch a man you have come to see an extension of the ministry of Jesus you have come with your requests you have come with your medical reports you have come with your pain you have come with all kinds of oppression you have come with all kinds of closed heaven and you're saying lord if you are the only one i know who can help me let me tell you your coming is faith enough did you hear what i said you're leaving your house to come is faith enough it's true like a patient goes to the hospital once you are in the hospital just leave the rest to the doctor then the doctor begins to prescribe and this is what is happening to us an extension of the ministry of jesus let's look at one scripture mark chapter 1 21 mark chapter 1 and verse 21 and they went into capernaum still the ministry of jesus and straightway on the sabbath day he entered the synagogue and taught it's interesting how jesus held his crusades he would take out time not just to preach but to teach jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive are we together if the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone it, it becomes volatile the people receive it and then it just evaporates but when they are taught it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received you can lose something you have received it's true you can lose healing demons can leave people and re-enter them again but when the word of god is taught it gives you the basis are we together now so jesus taught in their synagogues we're reading it's, it's a long reading let's see how far we can go just keep just continue and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes 23 and there was in their synagogue i love jesus see how his miracle service was as soon as he just finished preaching it was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom and there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit and the demons began to cry out 24 saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us we know who you are the holy one of god and so on and so forth and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him this is jesus for you this is jesus for you because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him let me tell you this when you command an unclean spirit and it goes it is a big deal did you hear what i said <laughs> doctors can treat sickness they can cast out devils machines can show an elongated lung or heart but it cannot show the spirit sitting there are you hearing what i'm saying these spirits are living entities they can hear they have a system and a structure they were designed to respect some people and disobey some people are we together 
they understand ranking in the spirit so when you issue a command as jesus did and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion are we together yes it is it truly is proof of dominion look at jesus used this the people were astonished they said our priests and rabbis didn't do this they couldn't do this i hope you know that while all the priests used to preach that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing but the words were not potent enough to force them to leave so they kept coming service after service may you not be a man of god that cohabits with demons and that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting and the demons that cause poverty failure whatever it is you share the grace and they share the grace with you and you go out no sir Haba. what then is the excellency of light over darkness your presence should discomfort the gate of hell so well that there is no pretending about it that's why some of you bring people here you notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening they want to run away it's not them it's not them the devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again but tonight the devil is a liar it's too late really it's too late 28 and immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about galilee and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of simon and andrew with james and john let's see what happened and simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell him of her now jesus is healing we saw him cast out devils he's about to heal now and he came and took her by the hand i love jesus and lifted her up and how many how long immediately. immediately do you know if jesus did not touch her she would remain like that and you would think it's the will of god don't trivialize an anointed hand goodness jesus walks in and says i'm introducing something to this woman's body that until the arrival of that thing the condition does not change that contact the bible says immediately the fever did what that means the fever was a living thing it could move abba is it, are you not intelligent people the fever left pastor alpha left me before jesus came the fever was with her they gave it all kinds of interpretation jesus look at what jesus did he didn't talk he just touched the bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak just by making contact alone are you seeing that now some it was about the transference of virtue and it forced the spirit there was a separation that means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you are you getting what i'm saying now yes that means that growth that swelling is a sign that there is something with you ah but the hands of jesus extended through us you see that I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you that means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body and just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go there is an agency that will separate you from that pile you will call it a miracle there is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated look at it immediately not slowly so the question is not whether you can be healed the question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit because when it happens the bible says immediately and she was so healed she went straight to the kitchen straight to the kitchen from a bed and he came and took her by the hand and brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set like koinonia now they brought unto him that means there was an information that had reached town 
that when we bring certain people to this man, there was something about him that was able to heal them. They brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. See the kind of people that came to Jesus. As a man of God, if these kinds of people are not coming to you, it's not the issue of I'm not called into this ministry. Something is wrong. Because they should discern that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are, there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick, but let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, Joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her. Something made that uncle call, brothers and sisters. Because that uncle also has relatives somewhere. Everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him. What makes him to leave them and come to you? No. Are we blessed? One question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray. Are you truly tired of the situation? You see, there's something I think I was sharing with. I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people see your sister, allow that pain, don't stop it. Because there are people, if you have not been pushed to the wall, you will not see the need for God. For as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you, you will not see the need to be serious. So sometimes God deliberately allows it. And that pain, the day five of your children said, Daddy, is this how we'll continue? You just get up and say, I'm coming for koinonia today. I'm, I'm tired of this. That pain was an indication that something is wrong. And that it needs remedy fast. Pain. There are people who will never run and come to God. But you just press one side of your stomach and you just felt, ah, something is growing. What is this? Next week, the thing increased. You told a doctor, just touch it and say, ah, I don't want to tell you the name. Pain. Just say, when is that miracle service said? The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life. Tonight. Do you believe it? I expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils, listen carefully, I expect that tonight, by his spirit, he will lift you out of certain captivities, lack of favor, delay. There are some of us who are trusting God to return certain things that left your life for years. Whoever told you it cannot, you heard the lady that said they stole her phone, they came with matchet and stole her phone. I remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a matchet. Foolish thieves. They don't know that a body without a spirit is dead. The same way you have been carrying a certificate, that's the body. Where is the spirit component? That's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin. But when the spirit component comes, let me tell you this. God never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted. A spirit entity must assist you. Even you, if you meet a herbalist, that herbalist is not alone. There is a spirit assisting him. You see that? Yes. Don't walk through life by your strength and power. Please help them. Life will be too hard for you. Is, is the mystery of hardship. Rejecting the assistance of the spirit. I would dare not do ministry without the spirit. What else will I be doing? 
but with God with God all things without him you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder I'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the Bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished and then the man if he's wise will tell you look I'm not alone Jesus said I'm not alone all these miracles you see I'm being assisted brothers and sisters the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance the realm of the spirit is in partnership you can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside shouting at overflow no no Abba. words are not hammer but when the spirit is upon them that word will enter you like a drug and all of a sudden you will find out that certain things will go <laughs> it will work in Zaria it will work in Lagos it will work in London it will work in Saudi Arabia it will work everywhere are we together mm. the spirits that oppress us must give way I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive the most important thing is not the ministrations as it were the most important thing is creating this expectation many of us come and we are just hoping um okay god i know you will bless me in the name of jesus may god lift you amen I just, well it was a nice service and you go back and nothing happens you keep watching people come to testify blessed is she that believes the bible says for unto her not unto them there shall be a performance hallelujah i believe the lord i came here full of the holy ghost and i came here believing with all my heart you are sick get ready to be healed don't 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 say well let's watch and see get ready to be healed you are oppressed of the devil you may not even know you're oppressed you just know that nothing is working in your life i want you to be tired and say god will you bring me here so especially for those of you who came so far lord will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that there are some of you in ministry you came to contact fire lord will you leave me will i leave my members my fellowship and come back here and go back no evidence of favor i believe him i believe that he's a mighty man i believe he's awesome i have seen his hand I have seen his power and ladies and gentlemen i present to you the same god yesterday today forever i present to you the same healer yesterday today forever i present to you the same deliverer i present to you the one who took joseph from the prison overnight i present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle. I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus. I present to you your destiny changer. I present to you your destiny maker. I present to you the anointer of men. The one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life. I present to you the prosperer the one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child i present to you the one who can give you influence can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder a specimen an epistle of his hand that's the god i present to you i have given a very nice speech we're about to step back and allow the king of glory ride over this place and let me watch the mountain that stands before him let me watch Zerubbabel or oh, no no he said who are thou mountain who are thou mountain who are thou infirmity who are thou delay who are thou stagnation before Zerubbabel he said before Zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain
Lift your hands. I want to pray. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. There is an impartation of the grace for favor. This is what the Lord is telling me. The grace for favor. The grace I'm about to pray for favor. Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father. Even as you have revealed to me. From this main auditorium. To overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three. And those online. Lord I release an impartation. For the grace for favor. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I stretch my right hand. And I decree and declare. Step into a new level of favor. 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 We need favor in our lives. Most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve. I say it again. In the name of Jesus, every challenge in your life that only the favor of God can solve, I stand before the God who has helped me and has helped this ministry. I release upon you an oil of favor. Take it now. In the name of Jesus, take favor. Take favor. Receive favor in the name of Jesus Christ. A strange dimension of favor. Favor that will surprise you. Favor that will accelerate your life. When a life, listen to me, when a life has no favor, it is clear. The proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life. Not the absence of money. You can have money. You can have intellect. You can have a job. But when there are no men in your life, you don't have favor. The proof of favor is not the coming of money. The proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that the men that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor, I prophesy them upon you now. I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business, upon your job, upon your projects. May men arise to help you. Hallelujah. There is the grace for favor. Those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me. I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? He came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Abba. Is it charm? What is on you is what brings things to your life. It's not what you want. It is what is on you. In the name of Jesus, 
that anointing that must come on you I declare that it comes on your head right now it comes upon your head right now producing strange results it comes upon your head right now it comes upon your head right now just follow me some of you don't know how you need favor you know you need favor but you don't know what extent I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor you will never be able to be happy on earth no I can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria not London Zaria here many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you nobody thinks about you God does not talk to anybody about you a gentleman I think one of these uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays and he stood to see me after the service and he said man of God my life is hard can you help me with some money and I looked at him I said you are not a wise gentleman I know you need money now but you should ask yourself the person giving you the money where did it come from the wiser prayer is for favor I said let's do an experiment I told him I said I will pray for you for favor return next Friday and tell me what happened if nothing happens I will give you money agreed he said yes and I prayed for him and he went brothers and sisters on Monday Monday that's the Monday after that gentleman sent me a text and he said his uncle that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money i said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you enough to see that you rise it takes favor can I pray that prayer for you again in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God you have done your best you have done your efforts you have struggled it's almost killing you now receive the grace for favor receive the grace for favor May your life change by favor. Receive the grace for favor. Hallelujah. It is favor that brings resources. It is favor that brings opportunity. There are many gifted people. There's no one to reward them. There are many nice people, many wonderful musicians, nobody to place a demand on their grace. It's so annoying when you see someone you are better than, but he has favor and you don't. And yet you have to say yes, sir. Her man did not think Mordecai was good enough, but favor. And he said, everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai, bow the knee, Mordecai is passing. Yes, a gatekeeper. You may not like a person, but when favor is on them, it will veto whatever you think. I pray for you again. Every door that must open in this season to validate favor, I command it to be open now. I command it to be open now. Listen. You're not going to build a house by savings let me tell you the truth it's not in today's nigeria you are not going to buy a car by saving no I practice all these things you are not going to to settle and train your children just by saving money you will need a grace 
that can accelerate your results otherwise you will never be a giver you will never you can't be a giver just by saving peanuts 10 naira and 100 naira when there is a demand life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor you will be frustrated and that's how satan wants to trap men he would trap you and make your life miserable let's release this favor on our families you have received it for yourself but let it get to your family i pray for you in the name of jesus christ my father every family that is represented here by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be a release of favor let there be a release of favor favor on every family favor on every family listen sometimes eh it is not warfare that destroys it is even how favor works favor can kill to make sure that one person rises some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make ghosts and say for as long as we are there you must route your success through us if you attempt to rise without us you will not rise i declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be god in that family hallelujah favor in one minute i want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak lift your voice begin to pray begin to pray participate lord i release favor concerning this job pray i release favor i release favor favor concerning my building project favor in my academics pray favor over my job lord favor 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 hallelujah Listen, let me tell you the truth. You see, Ba, this prayer you are praying, if this prayer is truly answered in your life, this is how you will stand. What is this? This favor prayer you see, there are people who have touched up this favor. They can tell you, favor is fearful in its operation. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey, Jimmy, I want to give you water what? that's just goodness favor is I want to keep blessing you I want to continue doing this many of us what happens is that we're mistaking goodness for favor someone just appear once and just says look i want to help you and it never happens again when it is favor a process is ignited it keeps following like that it's true study the things in your life you'll be able to separate goodness from favor there are things that just happen one time but favor favor continues so i'm seeing fire on my hands and I want to pray because the Lord wants to bless the works of our hands. Listen, whether you are on a job or whatever it is, you see, these hands you see, they are 
is a mystery it says the the hand of god it was with this hand god made man are we together now this hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray i'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small i stretch these hands the fire that the lord put upon this hand in the name of jesus i release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus christ you go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does god do these things to give us rest so we can serve him why does god open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from Satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things. You never will truly be able to seek God when certain things have not been solved in your life. It's true. You can't give God your best when you are still thinking of what to eat. You are thinking of what to wear. But when God takes those things away, your prayer life becomes worship, not just hours of petition in the flesh. hallelujah hallelujah overflow two there's someone the anointing of the spirit is coming on someone overflow two the overflow by the roadside bring the lady hello him Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done Overflow to the overflow by the road. Please quickly, we have to hurry up. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him There is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him Thy kingdom come. Thy will be. The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. 
in the name of Jesus Christ I release this woman right now in the name of Jesus Christ I release this woman the devil has put something in this lady's stomach this lady you are holding I command in the name of Jesus remove that evil you have put now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm about to pray and I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen there will be such a massive 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 deliverance now let it not surprise you I've explained to you what this thing is it's a separation you should rejoice when it happens because it means that you are entering a new season a new season a new season a new season
I decree and declare that every force sitting on your destiny as you count three as you count Jesus at the count of three let there be deliverance one witchcraft manipulations of darkness in the name of Jesus I command a separation through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit I decree I set it as an ordinance in the spirit I announce liberty liberty bring them out I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural, whether the earth, whether fire, that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three, I command those ordinances set on fire. One, two, three. Let there be liberation right now. Every family covenanted to the waters, covenanted to the air, to trees. I set you free now. map and I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the spirit going to or your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty complete liberty Overflow three, please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow three. Don't worry, you you that you you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow three. Just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. At the count of three, overflow three. I want you to shout the name Jesus because I'm seeing swords. That's what I'm seeing, and the Lord is bringing a massive, massive breakthrough massive deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus overflow three are you ready I'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you right now in the name of Jesus everyone under any kind of oppression at the count of three shout Jesus one two three Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. Hold on guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, I want to pray. The Lord is showing me something that is very interesting. The Lord wants to break cycles. There are people every season certain things happen. Every September somebody must die. 
every three three years somebody married must divorce in the name of jesus lift your hands you don't have to ask whether or not you are involved don't worry the anointing will look for you i decree and declare right now in the name of jesus the power that activates cycles demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves in the name of jesus i stretch my hands call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear god is not done with you i look at you and i see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if i don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of jesus i stretch my hands i command that devil let her go now in the name of jesus christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what god will do one two get ready three the chain of circles be broken cycles cycles of failure cycles of miscarriages cycles of unfruitfulness by the sound of the spirit be broken now hallelujah be broken now i want to pray um please this man i don't know who the this man yes please quickly we are soon going to pray for the sick i may not have time to prophesy to individuals i'm standing near this lady and i'm seeing a snake this is what i see in the name of jesus i cursed that devil i'm not seeing a human being i'm seeing a snake in the name of the lord jesus christ overflow one i'm seeing the power of god this i just mentioned snake and i was seeing serpents just moving at overflow one right now i'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes that's what i'm seeing it's happening to people at overflow one in the name of jesus let it be over now snakes and scorpions the mystery the mystery of snakes and scorpions he said i give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy sir i want to pray for you i don't know whether you came here for us Yes, you have been but, coming here uh, but i was tra i travel before that so i have not been coming i want to pray for you yes sir if i don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you i'm looking at you and i'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you i'm not a prophet of doom i want to pray for you you love jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you huh yes, uh, is that true yes sir looking at you and i'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you yes sir that thing is a charm yes sir. it's not happy it's charm yes. native yes. doctor yes sir huh? yes, that's sir. what will even kill you yes, sir. it's not going to solve your problem yes, sir. the people doing it are well-meaning yes sir. but the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you sir because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it yes, sir. and you violate it will destroy you yes, sir. can i pray for you yes, you have you have taken something in your system now that we even destroy you listen let me tell you when you are pressed we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall going to the devil to get a charm is is you are facilitating your destruction if satan gives you tea here he will hold a knife and stab you at the back father by the mercy of god i pray for this man let him not die in the name of jesus i close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of jesus both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms in the name of jesus we scatter that shrine into pieces in the name of jesus christ i pray for you sir the lord perfects you in jesus name i pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting i'm looking at her and i'm seeing something Agnes God is not done with that guy or that young man with blue
please if you are not agnes don't come here please your name is agnes where are you from I need to pray for you I'm seeing an attack on your life this attack is coming from Calabar huh are you hearing what I'm saying sir. I have to pray for you where are you from cross river you are from cross river yes sir. Come. I must pray for you Kai. there is somebody the Lord is setting the person free I'm seeing a friend going to a herbalist and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person. You are here now. In the name that is above all names. I'm serious. Don't think I'm just hyping you. In the name of Jesus, whoever's name has been written by any demonic friend or whatever herbalist, in the name of Jesus, because that person you keep seeing death dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus I cast that spirit now I'm going to pray for you and then we're going to pray for the sick right now ah. there is some serious deliverance I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit this is this is this is a serious Father, let this lady be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, you, this lady, come. You love Jesus? Huh? Yes, sir. Come. You, I, I'm not condemning you, eh? Look at me. You have to be very serious with God. One, two, friends. Look at me. God has delivered you many times. You would have destroyed yourself. Huh? You're a small girl. You need to love God with all your heart. Please, be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you i love you eh? i love you and that's why i'm telling you this you need you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up hmm? i'm not going to say everything i'm seeing but you have to be careful because it's god that saved you now i'm seeing something a virus anyway in the name of jesus christ father i pray for your daughter help her by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ 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 I'm standing and I'm seeing a tree and that tree is this lady and something that was planted and the Lord is saying uproot it I uproot this thing now in the name of Jesus Christ I uproot it now the Spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State I've never been there physically, but I'm seeing Benway, Benway, and I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down. It's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family involved in this, Sheketos Kotopakariakata, I command an uprooting. Every tree that has not been planted, help them by my father. Every tree I see Benway State. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you, my dear. You are a nice lady, but there's bad luck in your life. Very bad luck. And the Lord wants to help you. Father, help your daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bad luck be gone. Now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord help you. Come my dear. Let me pray for you. I'm about to pray for the sick now. Our time is gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are some. My spirit is heavy to prophesy. But because we have to. I want us to pray for the sick so that i can just make those declarations we may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy but i'm telling you god wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear i want to pray for you in jesus name the lord is rolling away the reproach in your family 
rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of Jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what I'm praying for you for I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head and the Lord is saying I should tell you that is a new level of lifting you this lady looking at me I prophesy it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ who is this who Agnes Agnes where is she Abuja. Abuja, sir. your sister yes father in the name of Jesus I pray for this lady where is she Abuja, sir. she loves Jesus yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her eh? in the name of is she married huh? in no. the name of uh, whatever it is in the name of Jesus Christ may God help you mama come let me pray for you it's your season of breakthrough come is this your child come boy come I'm looking at this boy and I'm seeing that God is going to use him this is a small boy boy how are you the, the boy doesn't even know but I'm going to pray for him Samuel did not know that he would become a great prophet one day when Eli he was just an innocent boy I'm going to pray for him mama please stand up I will pray for you look at me ma please don't be embarrassed but the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life this thing they call in house wahala God wants to take it from your life you are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord but this this cause of hardship um, this woman loves the Lord with all her heart. Father, you, what's, what's the name of this boy? Riba. Huh? Lifted. Okay. Your name is Lifted? Yes. Father, I lay hands on Lifted. In the name of Jesus Christ, use him mightily. We are all products of your grace. Lift him and use him mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ and I'm telling you this the month of April is your month of strange breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ the month of April is your month of breakthrough Azuka come leave the camera first let me pray for you and then you keep the camera I want to pray for you because I'm seeing a big project coming for you and this project is going to lift you this is something that has to do with your snapshot but God is bringing someone. It's been something you have desired that God will bring someone to open a door. And truth, you have been faithful. You have even been serving in this house. But I want to pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, lift him. Take him to that dimension of grace. I release that anointing upon you. It will no longer be an ordinary camera. I call forth men that will lift you. I command it so. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ open doors for you open doors for you in the name of jesus christ come this lady um sarah come there is witchcraft in your family i have to pray for you this thing is affecting everybody in the family everybody everybody not there's no exception everybody lord take away this plague of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ wonderful people beautiful ladies but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell in the name of jesus christ i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser in the name of jesus christ we are going to pray for the sick now listen i know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting god for healing and miracle let me pray for this lady how many of you have your prayer request now lift it up ushers your prayer request those online make sure we collect it this this lady let me have her hands lord jesus let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold her gently should be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick don't allow any nonsense remain in your body no matter how small make sure you insist that it leaves 
make sure you insist that it leaves we are going to be very fast please we'll be very fast now let me say this when you stand to receive healing don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping let your heart be open are we together number two accept whoever is praying for you ask you what is wrong you don't have to say okay it is my ears or my don't worry don't worry the people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch it doesn't matter what auditorium it's a corporate grace that is working here hallelujah and for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening make sure you are praying because I'm, I'm literally sensing as if I want to throw up. It's the spirit of prophecy. There's, there's something that the Lord is putting in my spirit to release. And that's why I want to pray for the sick quickly. So that we'll pray this prophecy. If we do this, I'm satisfied in this service. We have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time. Hallelujah. Jesus, someone please help with collecting the request. Make sure that even those at the extremes of the road their requests are collected please everybody did father in the name of jesus we pray by the ministry of the spirit several people serving as contact points but we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick lord your people have come some of them with incurable diseases some of them with all kinds of devils i decree and declare that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying thank you jesus my beautifier you have taken away the shame taken away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make me just like you my beautifier you have taken away The pain. Taking away the pain, make me just like you. Make me just like oh, you. my beautiful, my beautiful, you are taking away, taking away the shame, taking away the pain, taking away the pain. Make me just like you.
이포츠코 이포게 마두에 이포츠코 이포게 마두에 이포츠코 이포게 마두에 이포츠코 이포게 마두에 
way maker, miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, way maker, miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. your hands here and begin to pray in the spirit stretch your hands here begin to pray in the spirit February, we look to you again to surprise us. Lord, represented here are the requests of people from several nations of the world and several across this nation. In the name of Jesus, Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer. 
so Lord I transfer the trust of your people to you the one who is able to meet every need and on the strength of the grace that only comes from you and in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the resurrected lamb the one who is most victorious I prophesy and I turn every request here to become a testimony in the name of Jesus As I walk through these requests in the name of Jesus that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge every challenge every challenge no matter what it is I decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released in the mighty name of Jesus Christ listen to me no matter what it is no matter what it is provided it found its way here in the name of Jesus Christ the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony there are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered may they lack the sleep there are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered. May they be promoted. There are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered. May they be laid to rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. If they are still praying for you in any of the overflows, don't worry. You can just connect with them while I pray for you. By the grace of God, you will not write your request twice. I thought I was done, but I just felt drawn again to it. Whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle, that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere. May the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. As long as God grants me the grace, I will never stop prophesying over you. It is the greatest thing I think I can do. If I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God, I may not be able to accurately address everyone. But when it comes to prophecy, everyone can receive. Are we together now? wherever you are you can receive you've heard the testimonies you've seen the things that happen the bible says everyone who speaks let him speak according to the measure of grace there are some things this anointing can do and let's trust god that it happens in your life let's pray lift your hands father in the name of jesus christ i pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already that from January February you've not known joy I declare that as this week ends that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too the Bible says no weeping endures for a night it says but joy comes with the morning I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say Lord I've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the God I serve release it to you anyone here jobless or trusting God for a better job in the name of Jesus between now and March miracle service, return with your miracle job. Return with your miracle job. Return with your miracle job. Anyone here due for promotion and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is, you've been kept at a level. In the name of Jesus, I open the doors for you. Rise to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every 
manifestation of delay in your life others move forward but when it gets to your turn something just clamps you in one position or slow progress slow progress is as destructive as delay i command speed to your life i speak speed to your life i prophesy speed to your life in the mighty name of jesus christ i decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life in the name of jesus this is the season where all those doors are closed forever i pray for those in business here i speak over it the grace for multiplication let it come upon your business in the name of jesus christ i pray for those who are trusting god to correct certain things in their lives it may be results for students it may be something it may be a mistake of the past you've seen god correct things in strange ways here i command supernatural correction for you for every student here that the result you are holding is not your real result i don't care how long in the name of jesus the son of the living god we correct it right here anyone here involved in any kind of project building project whatever major project you or your loved ones i decree and declare the finisher's anointing comes upon that project in the name of jesus christ let me pray over your finances listen let me tell you this the bible says believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established he said believe in his prophets so shall you prosper if you truly believe god will surprise you in the name of jesus christ i pray for you i give you two weeks from today in the name of jesus christ that between now and the next 14 days let something notable happen to your finances listen I don't want you to think as I'm praying you are thinking oh God will use a B leave whoever God will use to him I'm not talking business in the name of Jesus I say it again between now and the next 14 days may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances hallelujah every gift of the spirit that you had once seen in your life and for some reason is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again i prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to god a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to Jesus through you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you take that grace now the grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand listen not just through Joshua Selman in the name of Jesus those hands that are stretched towards me I prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles receive it in the name of Jesus the grace to reproduce the miracles in this house I release that grace young and old male or female receive it in the name of Jesus I speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes in the name of Jesus Christ whoever needs to make peace with you I decree and declare the grace of God compels them to make peace with you hallelujah who 
whoever has been directed by God to bless you and the devil is stopping them from obeying God is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of Jesus the devil wants to stop them I clear the way for your contact with them in the name of Jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if God does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious I pray that between now and Sunday the God that I serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my God step in and surprise you We're rounding up whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you I tread that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant I say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of Jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow I will do something then in the night something happens in the name of Jesus everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand hallelujah finally I call your destiny helpers from the north the south the east the west whether they are in this country or outside this country I don't know how God will make them meet you but I declare they must meet you in the name of Jesus they will not only meet you they will bless you in the name of Jesus they will not only bless you they will continue blessing you I multiply dreams and visions and encounters in your life whatever has choked away your prayer life you used to pray for two three four five hours now you pray for 10 15 minutes you are drowsy you are tired it's an attack it is an attack it is the devil you used to be consistent but right now you wake up in the night you pray for 10 minutes you are snoring back in the name of Jesus tonight let there be revival upon your prayer life revival over your prayer life the appetite to study the word you once had it but it went away and for some of you you've not read your bible since last friday it's not that you don't want to the grace to make it happen is no longer there i command tonight may that fire for the word come upon you hallelujah for all your loved ones who are connected to you whether they are born again or not because you came here tonight I stretch my hand may the grace and the blessing that came to you may it get to them too in the name of Jesus Christ give Jesus a clap